I'm going to encourage you to grab those. Um, can you bump my mic up just a hair? Um, grab your Bibles tonight. Also, if you're using Version, the online Bible app, like many folks um, use, the notes are there for you tonight. The scripture and the text are there for you. You can follow along. Um, but I also want to begin tonight just kind of giving you um, a, a brief overview. Follow is all about that, that invitation. Jesus gives and extends an invitation, not only to his early disciples, but to each of you. An invitation to follow him. If you've missed um, the first message in this series, you can check out our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash go Terra Nova. Um, the previous messages, tonight's message, maybe, maybe for some of you, you're going to hear the truth tonight, and it's going to strike you, and you're going to go home, and you're going to think, man, I wish I could remember what he said. I, I wish I could recall that. Well, you can visit our YouTube channel and watch that again. Real quick, before we dive in, I want to remind you some of the truths that we learned last week. Some of the truths that we discovered last weekend. The first truth that we discovered is this, that being a sinner, being a sinner does not disqualify you for following Jesus. In fact, we discovered that it's a prerequisite. Every individual that Jesus extended an invitation, that he said, come, follow me, they were all sinners. So being a sinner does not disqualify you from following Jesus. So now the good news is, that means all of us tonight, it doesn't matter how in over your head, how far up to your eyeballs you've been in sin, guess what? The invitation still matters for you, all right? It, it doesn't disqualify you being a sinner. And then for some of us, the second one kind of became a heavy truth. Being an unbeliever, being an unbeliever does not disqualify you from following Jesus. In fact, many of the first followers that followed Jesus didn't believe in the beginning. It was through relationship. It was through doing life. It was after the death, burial, and resurrection that many began to believe. In fact, you remember Thomas? We call Thomas the doubter. Doubting Thomas, right? Upon the resurrection of Jesus, Thomas is like, whoa, I don't even know if I believe that's you. Show me, the, show me the prints in your hands, and then I'll believe. Many of the disciples had this conversation. God, I, I believe, but, but Jesus, help my unbelief. And so for some of you, I, I understand this. For some of you watching online, I get it. You don't believe in every compartment and area of your life, and that's okay. Jesus still says, follow me. You, you may not believe that he's your healer tonight. You may not believe that he's your portion. You may not believe that he's able to restore. You may not believe that he can fix your jacked up, messed up life. But that's okay. He still says, follow me. Another truth that we unpacked last weekend is this. The Pharisees, those religious people, they say something like this. Hey, if you change, then you can come follow me. Throw that next slide up there. Change, and you can follow. The Pharisees say change, and then join us. In fact, much of the American church is guilty of adopting this type of attitude. Change your life, dress like me, believe like me, behave like me, and then you can join us. That was not the ministry that Jesus had. In fact, Jesus said, Come close, follow me, hang out with me. And then over time, as you're in proximity, as you do life with me, I promise you areas of your life will begin to change. You see, Jesus wasn't bothered by the tension. He wasn't bothered by the reality that those he invited to follow didn't behave and believe like he did in the beginning. He was okay with that. And so that's the truth that we began with last week. And the big question, the big question is, am I following? 
The big question is, am I following? Not did I make a decision? Not am I behaving the right way? Not am I behaving the way those people at the church expect? The question is, where you're at tonight, today, are you in the process of submitting, surrendering, and following Jesus? This whole series is about following Jesus. Now, for many of us, when we read in Scripture, when we read in the Gospels, we read things like Jesus came, he found the fishermen in the boat, and he said, follow me. They left everything and followed. And for some of us, we're just going, I can't connect to that. I, I don't get it. In my life, I, can't, I cannot connect. I can't wrap my head and my heart around just, just leaving everything and following blindly. I, I don't know if I could do this whole blind faith thing. Well, I want to share with you tonight that in Scripture, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are four stories, four narratives, four books that are content of the life of Jesus. And every one of them were written with a different set of eyes, with a different perspective, a different lens. And so in Matthew, Matthew was um, a, a follower of Jesus. He was the tax collector. He was a Jew, and he wrote for the Jewish people. And, and, and his was an eyewitness, firsthand account. How many of you have ever been a part of something, and when you go to kind of retell the story, you just, you just kind of get to the point, and you tell it, and maybe you leave out some of the, the details? In fact, my wife would rather it happen that way. She'll just look at me and say, just get to the point, and I'm like trying to give her all the details. Well, Matthew, his writing was just kind of to the point. But we also can see, see some of the same stories, some of the same events written by other, um, other Gospels. In fact, if you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 18. We're going to read Matthew's account of him calling some disciples. Matthew chapter 4 beginning at verse number 18. It says this in Matthew 4, 18. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother, Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Okay, so they were, they were putting their nets in the lake because they were fishermen. Look at the next verse, 19. Come, follow me. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I, and I will send you out to fish for people. And then in chapter 4, verse 19, it says, At once, at once, in verse 20, they left their nets and they followed him. We see this picture that at once they followed him. And then in verse 21, it says, Going from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, and they were preparing their nets. And in verse 22, Jesus calls to them, and immediately they left their boat, they left their boat and their father, and they followed him. So the way that Matthew is writing this is like Jesus just shows up and, and he says, hey, follow me. And these guys are like, sorry, pops, we're going to follow the guy with the robe and the sandals. We're out. Like, like, there's not a whole lot of detail. And it looks like that the early followers of Jesus just made a maybe unrash, irresponsible decision to leave everything and follow this rabbi. Well, if you turn with me to Luke chapter 5, if you turn with me to Luke chapter 5, we're going to uncover a little bit of this story, okay? But first, turn your attention up here to the, to the screen. This little blue blip kind of up there in the right-hand corner, that's the Sea of Galilee, all right? And that's where, that's where Jesus is teaching just near the Sea of Galilee. And now I want you to understand, I mean, before we really unpack this, 
I want you to understand, this is not like, this is not like the, the little pond over the complex, okay? This isn't like just kind of one of the, the small lakes you go fishing at. This is a sea. I mean, it is huge. In fact, I've got a picture. Throw that up there. Like, you can see the mountains off in the distance um, on this sea. It's, it's a, a, a big, large body of water, and, and uh, it was very deep. And so to go fishing in the Sea of Galilee, it was not a small task, all right? And many fishermen made their living, they lived their life on boats in the Sea of Galilee, okay? And so Luke is going to, he's going to unpack things. Now something you need to know about Luke, Matthew is writing to the Jews, but Luke, he was an investigator. I mean, Luke was a detail-oriented guy. Luke was the physician, all right? And Luke, he was writing to the Gentiles, okay? And, and, and just to make things clear, you and I, we are among the Gentiles. And, and so he was really writing to those who might, might would have a hard time receiving the Messiah. In Jewish culture, Matthew was writing to the Jews, and the Jewish culture they had an anticipation, an expectation of a coming Messiah, okay? For the, the Gentile, the whole gospel was new and different for them. And so Luke is trying to give them great detail and understanding, okay? And so in Luke chapter 5, beginning in verse 1, we're going to see Luke's account of the same story. Say, same story. Point to your neighbor and tell them it's the same story. Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. It says, One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake at Gennesaret, which is the Sea of Galilee, it's the same place, uh, Jesus is standing by the Sea of Galilee, and the people were crowding around him, and they were doing what? They were listening. You see, Jesus is preaching on the banks of the Sea of Galilee. He's preaching, and it says that the people were listening to the Word of God. Now, this isn't preaching like you and I know it and understand it. This is before the days of sound systems. This is before the days of stages and platforms and, and security and, and all those kinds of things, crowd control. But, but Jesus is standing on the banks of the Sea of Galilee and he's preaching and people are listening. This is important. This is important. We're going to flush this out. Look at verse number two. He saw at the water's edge two boats. So he's, he's preaching, he's teaching, people are listening, and they're beginning to crowd in, and he sees on the water's edge two boats. Now these two boats were left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. Now you have to understand the process, all right? Fishermen would go out in their boats. They would take these huge nets out into the water. They would fish all night. They would catch their fish. But upon the break of day, they would roll ashore as the, the sun comes up and the heat begins to beat in the, the hot part of the day. They would come in and they would end their fishing. And when they stopped fishing, every day it was a practice that just went with the job. Every day they washed and cleaned their nets. You, you know, like, like they, they knock off all the, the, the water bottles, beer cans, sunglasses, things from, you know, they've collected. Okay, maybe not. But certainly they would collect seaweed and all the things that were unwanted. They would clean off their nets, all right? So maybe if it were us today, we'd have to clean off water bottles, sunglasses, you know, beach stuff. And so they were cleaning off their nets. And then they would hang them in the, the sun and let them dry. And so this process is going on down on the edge of the water. And as Jesus is speaking and preaching, he sees these two boats. And the boats were left by the fishermen 
who are washing their nets. Now you see already, already there's more going on in the story than Matthew's account. Matthew's like, hey, Jesus walked up and said, you, follow me. All right, we're leaving it all. Let's go. Already we're getting a picture of what's happening. Okay? And then we go on to verse number 3. It says, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, or Peter, to Simon Peter, and he asked him, he, he asked him to put out a little from the shore. He says, then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. So people are crowding in. Jesus gets the idea, I'm going to get into the boat. And we don't know, maybe, maybe Simon Peter tied off the line and pushed him out into the water. Maybe, maybe Simon Peter got in the boat and manned the watercraft out into the water a little ways. But nonetheless, Jesus continues to teach. There's this process. Several hours, Jesus is teaching. They're cleaning their nets. All the while, they're able to hear Jesus teaching. At this point, Jesus is in the boat, either with Peter or with Peter just off in the distance, but he's continuing to teach the people. And then if you look at verse number 4, when he, had, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, go on with the next part, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Now, I, I think it's interesting. When he was done teaching, he didn't say, hey, Simon Peter, thanks for the boat. He didn't say, Simon Peter, you, you, can, you can count on just an overwhelming blessing because of what, uh, what you've contributed. He, he continues and he gives an order and he, he asks him to do something that he had just finished doing. He says, I want you to put down in deep water with your nets. Now, it's kind of like at your house, maybe when you've, you've spent the day riding four-wheelers and you've been mudding and you get the four-wheeler home and you, you park the four-wheeler and you get out the water hose and, and you, you clean it all back up, right? Or maybe you've been fishing and you've cleaned all your, your tackle boxes, your boat's been cleaned and wiped out. Maybe you've ridden a horse. Maybe it's that kind of deal. You know what it takes. You ride a horse all day, you take all the tack off, you clean it, you, you get it all put back away in the barn. And imagine you've done all that. And somebody comes back and goes, hey, by the way, let's gather your nets and throw them back out in the water. Now, Peter, Peter and those other fishermen had been out on the water all night the night before. They had been out on the water and they had just finished cleaning their nets. And Jesus asks something of Simon Peter. He says, put out in the deep water. Put out in the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Now, I could imagine Simon Peter, he could have revolted and said, there is no way. It's now daytime. Fish do not, fishermen do not fish in the day. Why do fishermen in the Sea of Galilee that is very deep, Roger, why do they fish at night? Fish are nocturnal. But when it's cooler at night, what do fish tend to do? They bite. They come to the top. So as the fish in the nighttime come to the top, the, the fishermen go out and drag their nets, and they catch fish. But when the sun comes out, it's time to pack up. You clean your nets because all the fish are going deeper into the water and you can't catch fish so now imagine this Simon Peter and the others had been out all night and had not caught anything not only did they have a bad catch but they've already cleaned their nets and Simon is asked by Jesus put out into the water put out into the water for a catch look at verse number five and then Simon answered master Master, we've worked hard all night, and we've not caught anything. You see, he's trying 
He is trying to get Peter to understand, and Peter's trying to get Jesus to understand. There's this conversation. And I love this because at this point, Jesus is asking Peter, and this is for some of you tonight, you need to hear this. Jesus is asking Peter to do something that Peter has done thousands of times in his own life. But this time, Jesus is asking him to do something he's always done, but to do it my way. Let that one sink in for a minute. Jesus is asking Simon to do something that Simon has done thousands of times in his life. But this time is different because Jesus is asking Peter, do it my way. Now, it's interesting because Jesus could have maybe pulled out a, a screen and a slideshow and said, Peter, I, I want you to go out into the deep because one of these days, one of these days, buddy, throw it up there. Well, he says, because you say so, I will. Leave that up there a second. So, so Jesus responds and he says, because you have said so. He, he's, he's, he's heard, he's listened, he's been informed. And, and Jesus could have said, Peter, one of these days, throw that up there. If you cast out your net into the deep, one of these days, does anybody know what that is? That's St. Peter's Square. That, that's St. Peter's, bas, bas, how do you say it? Basilica. Yeah, this, this is like all in the name and the honor of Simon Peter who's in the boat. Okay? Like, like just hundreds of years later, he could have said, Simon Peter, if you just listen to me this one time, if you would do it the way that I want you to this one time, look at what's going to happen. You're going to have this. This is going to be named in your honor. This is going to be named after you. It's going to take them 118 years to create it. And by the way, Peter, look at this place on the inside. It's, it's magnificent. And if you just do this one thing, I want you to see something. This isn't a conversation Jesus had with Simon Peter. He just asked Simon Peter, would you do what you've done a thousand times, but this one time, will you trust me? Go back to that scripture. And he says, but because you say so, because you say so, I will let down the nets. For some of you, the whole crux of tonight's message is this. Following Jesus, following Jesus is simply listening to his voice. And when he, when he asks you to do something you've done a thousand times previous, but he asks you, would you do it my way now? And you simply respond and you listen because he said so. You see, you and I, we never fully understand what hangs in the balance because of our obedience or disobedience. You see, Peter had no idea. He had no idea where the beginning of this journey would take him. He had no idea that thousands of years later, still to this day, there would be something called St. Peter's Square named after him. He had no idea that his, his following Jesus would result in that. You and I, today, the very thing God is calling you to follow me in, you have no idea what hangs in the balance as you contemplate whether or not you're going to listen and obey. You see, Jesus says to Simon Peter, I want you to follow me. And then look at verse number 6. When they had done so. You might want to write that down. When they had done so, not when they believed so, not when they thought so, not when they had good intentions to do so, but when they followed him, when they responded in obedience, when they had done so. You see, following Jesus isn't believing so, it's not thinking so. It's not behaving so. It's doing so. So when they had done so, the next part of the verse, it says they caught 
such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Can I tell you? It's daytime. They had caught nothing. They caught so many fish that their nets began to break. And so they signal, go to the next verse, they signal their partners in the other boat to come and to help them. So they came and they filled, they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. You see, in a moment of time when Jesus bid, follow me, put your nets in, go out into the deep, would you listen to me? Would you do what you've done thousands and thousands and thousands of times before? But this time, do it my way. In that moment, God showed up and Peter experienced something he could have never dreamed of on his own. You see what hangs in the balance for you and I in following Jesus? Something, listen to me, that will wreck and transform your life. Now, I'm going to tell you what we're not going to see in Scripture. We're not going to see Simon Peter go, Holy cow, guys! We're taking a vacation! We have more fish than we can sell in the next month! They didn't say, hey, get a refrigerated trailer, let's, let's do this. They didn't respond in that way. They understood that following Jesus had resulted in something supernatural. Look at verse number 8. When Simon Peter saw this, when he saw what happened, here's what he did. He fell at Jesus' knees. He fell at the knees of Jesus, and here's what he said. Here's what he said. Go away from me, Lord. Now, I want you to notice this. If you look in the text a few, a few verses earlier, when Jesus says, I want you to roll out into the, the water, Simon Peter says, Master, because you said so, I will. At that point, at that point, to, to Simon Peter, Jesus was nothing more than another rabbi or teacher. And he was just being respectful. But now, since he's obeyed and followed, some transformation takes place. He fell at his feet and he said, Go away from me, Lord. Lord. Because I am a sinful man. Can, can I tell you something tonight? When you follow Jesus, and you see Jesus for who he is, it's not hard to get a real image and a picture of who we are. In the presence of Jesus, we see Jesus for who he is, and it reveals who we are. We are sinful. But check this out, verse number 9. For he and all of his companions, they were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. And verse 11. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, from now on, in other words, we've, we've experienced life change. Because you've submitted and surrendered, you've done something that you do a thousand times, but this time you listen to me, and I've shown myself faithful. Listen to me. Some of you tonight, the only thing you need to do is you need to muster up just a little bit of faith in your life, because when you partner your little bit of faith with his faithfulness, he shows up. For some of you, you have to partner the little bit of faith you have with his faithfulness. He says, from now on, I got something in store for you. He began to speak to the future of Simon Peter. And God wants to speak to your future and my future. When we begin to follow Jesus, things change. Not change and follow me, but follow me and things will change. You want to know why you've not beat addiction? Because you haven't followed Jesus. You want to know why your life is still a wreck? You failed to follow Jesus. You want to know why you can't figure out your finances? Because you're doing it on your own a thousand and a thousand and a thousand times and he's just screaming, would you listen to me and do it my way once? You see, he says from now on I will make you fishers of men. Go back. 
I will make you fish for people. And then he closes in verse 11. So they pulled their boats up to shore. And now, after they had experienced all that, after they would experienced all that, it was then that they pulled their boats up to shore and they left everything and they followed him. You see the difference in the two stories? You see the difference? You see, Luke begins to give us details after details. And, and, and in, in Luke's account of this story, he gives four stages of following Jesus. And I think for all of us in the room tonight, we're at one stage or another when it comes to following Jesus. You see, Simon Peter didn't just immediately up and leave everything. He, he'd been listening to Jesus teach. He began to receive some information. He began to hear truth. As he began to do that, he has a, a moment with Jesus in the boat. And over a period of time, he sees the difference that Jesus makes. And then he left everything. So four stages of following. For some of you, tonight, you are in this first stage. You're in the sit and listen stage of following Jesus. You see, every commitment to follow Jesus starts with information and content. Some of you, you're at the sit and listen stage. And the truth is, your life is so rocked, turned upside down, and in desperate hopelessness that you came here tonight to see if maybe, just maybe, I could find a little hope. And so you're here tonight, and you're, you, I hate to tell you this, but you, you followed Jesus. You took your first step to follow Jesus. You came to sit and listen and to see if the creator of the universe, the Son of God, can help my situation. Some of you, you're at the set and listen stage. And for you, you know what I want to encourage you to do? Your next step, come back next week. Come back next week. Follow Jesus. Continue to get information because as we continue to open Scripture, you're going to discover that He is the healer. He is the redeemer. He is the hope of glory. He is the salvation for all mankind. You're going to hear that. And so for some of you, you're following Jesus is, is set and learn, set and listen. Keep coming back. For some of you, the next step might be that you, you go to a small group because number two is this. Loan him the boat. For some of you, you've been coming. You've been faithful. You've been coming. You've been sitting and listening, just as Simon Peter had been sitting and listening. And now Jesus, he, he, he wants to borrow your boat. I mean, he's not, gonna, he's not gonna take anything from you. He's not gonna ask you to quit smoking, break up with him or her, give it all up, change your job. I mean, he just wants to borrow your boat. He, he just wants to give you a slight inconvenience. And Jesus is asking you, can I borrow your boat? Let me, let me kind of make sense for you of the borrow the boat. You see, for some of you, that next step is going to a small group, going to men's fight club, going to a ladies Bible study because you've been receiving information. You've been getting content. And every night when you leave, every time you leave, you go home and you're like, man, they said Jesus can heal my, my marriage. Jesus can fix my addiction. Jesus can. But I got a lot of questions. You see, Jesus is asking for your boat, and, and he wants a little commitment that it might inconvenience you. You might actually have to open your Bible and dig in on your own. You might have to go to a small group and say, hey, I've got enough information. Now let me ask some questions. And that's okay. That's that next step in following Jesus. Loaning your boat. I mean, again, Jesus is just asking to borrow it. He's not going to steal it, take it. For some of you, your next step in following Jesus is just to experience a little bit of inconvenience to push in a little more. And then I think for many of us, as I've done life with you, as I've been your pastor over the last few years, 
I think for many of you, you're at number three. You need to take him fishing. The next step in following Jesus is to take him fishing. And here's what I mean. And if you're a regular attender here at Terranova Church, you're going to understand this. God wants to do something that you've done a thousand times. And he's going to ask you to do it differently. Stop doing it the same way. Because as you do it the same way over and over, remember that's insanity, doing the same thing over and over, looking for different results. But, but Jesus wants to take what you've done over and over and over again, and he wants you to do it his way. And he's asking just for those, those areas. And, and let me just give you this tonight. If you're taking notes, write this down. There's three areas. There are three areas that I feel like God's probably saying, hey, take me fishing. Jesus is saying in your life, take me fishing. I, I know you've done it over and over and over a thousand times on your own, but this time would you just do it my way? Would you just do it my way? They involve three areas. Relationships. Relationships. Maybe you've done your marriage your way over and over again, thousands and thousands of times, and Jesus is just like a gentleman standing by and going, hey, hey, just invite me. Just, just bring me fishing. Just, 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 would you, hey, would you just shut up and do it my way? He, he, he wants to pour into your marriage your relationships with your children, with your, your co-workers, but relationships. Not only that, but, but professions. With what we do in our lives, we do things over and over and over again, and we go to work, and we come home, we go to work, and we come home, and we're never making enough, we're never content, and we just can't stand it. And Jesus is just going, hey, why don't you take me fishing? Why don't you just do it my way? in your area of relationships, your career, and then finally your finances. Jesus wants you to take him fishing. You've done it a thousand times your way, now would you just stop and would you listen and do it my way? You see, for many of you, your next step in following Jesus is just hearing his voice and inviting him to fish in that area of your life. He's not asking for everything. He's not asking to, to, to have it all right now. He's, he's just one area. And I know for some of you, you're going, okay, wait a minute. No, Jesus does want it all. Yes, he does. I'm going to get there. But we're talking about the progress and how we begin the journey of following Jesus. You see, for Simon, it was beginning when he was in the water and he obeyed Jesus by throwing his net on the other side of the boat in the daylight when he had previously caught nothing just because he said so. Now, for some of you, you're, you're honestly just scared to let go of that thing. You're, you're, you're honestly just scared to do what he's telling you to do. It's understandable. You see, Simon Peter had a lot on the line. I mean, there were, there were crowds of people there watching. I mean, I mean, he was a fisherman, for crying out loud. He had just washed the nets. What if, what if I listen to Jesus and I roll out there and I throw my nets? Now me and my friends, we've got to do it all over again. We're going to look like idiots. We're going to be made a fool. But he says, Jesus, just because you said so, I I'm going to give it a shot. Just because you said so, I'm going to do it your way. And that began a course of action for Peter. And so for some of you, that's... You need to take him fishing in your career, your relationships, your finances. And then number four, there's a select few of you, I think, are at this place. And, and ultimately, this is where Jesus wants every one of you. In this journey of following him, some of you, you're honestly at that place of leaving your nets. You've invited Jesus to go fishing in those areas of your life, and he's changed things. Man, has he changed things. I can look around this room and I can see people that, that used to do things their own way in, in, in segments of their life and they changed that and they gave that to Jesus and, and they don't even look like the same person anymore in those areas. And, and Jesus changed you and, and he did an awesome work and so, so he produced in you enough faith that you would give him control of another area and then another area and it's been a journey of a couple years but now Jesus is going, hey, I, I've shown you 
your little bit of faith and my whole lot of faithfulness. I've never failed you. I've never let you down. I'm still extending my invitation. Hey, follow me. Follow me. In fact, why don't you leave your nets? Why don't you leave it all behind and 100% give your life to me? Everything, your relationships, your career, your finances, your children, your home, your security, everything about you. Jesus says, follow me and leave your nets. You see, there are four stages of following Jesus. And the question is this, where you're at right now, whether you are sitting and listening, whether he's asking to inconvenience you and, and he wants to borrow your boat and he wants you to trust him in one little area, or whether it's, hey, you need to take him fishing or leave your nets. The question is, the same as we started with, am I? Not my neighbors, not my spouse, but am I following Jesus? You see, for Simon Peter, it was a journey. It was a journey. He began doing his normal routine, and in the process of life, he began to hear and receive information about Jesus. Some of you, you're here because somebody's loved you enough to invite you. Some of you, you're here because somebody's ministering hope and healing in your life. And, and, and you're in earshot, and you're, you're receiving information that yes, Jesus really does love you and care for you. Jesus is your hope. There are people that love you. Well, hey, continue to sit and listen because you won't sit and listen long. You will be grabbed by this person we call Jesus and your life will be transformed. But the question is where you're at in your individual life. Are you responding and are you following? Father God, we come before you tonight. God, I thank you for the life and the story of Simon Peter. God, I thank you that you, you desire for us to come on a journey of following you. God, I thank you that you didn't ask or require blind faith from Simon Peter. But as he was doing his routine, mundane thing, he encountered information and content from the Word of God as Jesus began to proclaim truth. Through that process, Jesus inconvenienced him and asked, asked just to borrow the boat. And that one response catapulted Simon Peter's life into something he could never, ever have thought of on his own. God, I wonder tonight who might be here that needs to, to just be willing to, to loan you the boat, to let you investigate and, and be investigated in an area of their life. God, who might be here tonight that just needs to say, hey, I, I'm tired of doing my finances on my own. I'm tired of trying to manage my marriage on my own. I, I, I'm tired of trying to decide where I'm supposed to be and what my purpose is. And, and I'm just tired of that. And I'm going to listen to you in this area of my life. I, I want to take Jesus fishing in my career. I, I want to bring him along. And I, I want to do what he says. God, I wonder what might hang in the balance for all of us tonight. God, one thing I'm absolutely certain of, Simon did not follow Jesus because he knew that St. Peter's Square wouldn't, wouldn't they exist. He, he didn't follow Jesus so that he could be made known, but he followed Jesus because Jesus rocked his world, transformed his life, and the person of Jesus validated and gave clarity to the Father. And it was all about following Jesus and making Jesus known. And so God, all across the worship center tonight, Lord, I pray that individuals would be consumed with following Jesus, not because of what's in it for them, but what's in it for your kingdom. What's in it for the glory and the honor of Jesus? With every head bowed and every eye closed, tonight the invitation is this. Am I following? Am I sitting and listening? Is it time to loan him the boat? Do I need to, do I need to invite him to come fish in this area of my life? Maybe for some of you, you need to leave the nets altogether. 
designed for a response to the invitation. Will you follow me? The altar is open. I would love to pray with you. But when I invite you to stand, I want you to take that first step. Ready to stand to your feet? One, two, three. You come tonight.